Hello and welcome to New Mexico Rising. My name is Dan. You know, each and every week I try to bring people from across the country to talk to me about things we can do right here in your neighborhood. If you actually want to be on the show, just email me. That's NewMexicoRising at gmail.com. On this week's show, we got this. <laughs> I'm completely like, um, just me, <laughs> I guess you could say. All of that and more right here on New Mexico Rising. There are over 36 million adults who have some college credits but no degree. And rather than starting over, many of them can turn life experience into college credit. Here to explain how it all works is Devin Andrews, Vice President of Admissions and Evaluation at the University of Phoenix. Welcome, Devin. Hi, thanks for having me. Devin, how can transferring credits help people who have already started college but haven't finished their degree? So the good news for those 36 million adults you mentioned is they don't have to start over. They can continue to work toward their degree by transferring their previous college credit, which can help them to save time and money. They can also get value for their work and life experience to help them finish what they've started. Not every student takes that traditional path to the four-year degree right out of high school. Every learner is different. And students really deserve to receive credit for all of it, the learning, the work and lived experiences throughout their educational journey. Can you tell us how life experience can count towards earning college credit? Sure. Uh, you know, as adults, we all have rich experiences, both from our work and our personal lives. Uh, credit for prior learning takes that into account, and it provides a path to evaluate whether that learning is at a level that can be recognized as potential college credit. Many adults have learning obtained through work and life experiences like professional training programs, exams, or other sources that may give them a level of knowledge, comprehension, and understanding that's really at the same level as a student who has taken a course in a similar subject area at a college or university. And so in these cases, we can assess that learning and award credit toward their degree. Many institutions like University of Phoenix offer an individualized process to evaluate experience and learning um, and to award that college credit. What are the steps for getting credit for learning someone has already done? So I have four recommendations for anybody that's trying to get started. Um, first, it's important to document the learning experiences that you have. This could be that past college coursework, but also learning experiences like military service and training, licenses and certifications, um, personal learning like parenting, caregiving, uh, maybe community service, um, and also remember to consider any training you've completed at work. Second, um, look for tools that help you to assess the program time and cost, including any savings that you can achieve from your prior learning. Uh, for example, at University of Phoenix, we offer a savings explorer tool that helps individuals understand even before they become a student, uh, the many ways that they can save time and money, including how they might get college credit for prior work and life experience. Third, it's really critical to understand the policies related to transfer at the institution that you're considering. Uh, policies do vary from one school to another, so it's really important to do that research. And then related to that, um, you know, review the degree requirements for the program you're interested in and consider how that lines up with your past coursework and experience. Um, and also look for that um, school to see if they have any special programs that are more transfer friendly than others. Where can people find more information on these options? Um, you can check out our website, phoenix.edu slash cost dash savings. Thanks for joining and sharing today, Devin. Thanks for having me. Did you know that nuts can do more than just satisfy your snack cravings? They can actually boost your energy, improve your gut health, and even support your skin. Joining us today is registered dietitian Sammy Haber Brondo to share the surprising benefits of nuts and how CVS Pharmacy's new Well Market snack line can help support your wellness. Welcome, Sammy. Hi, thank you. Sammy, what are some of the top nutritional benefits of including nuts in your daily diet? Nuts have so many nutrition benefits. They're full of plant-based protein and healthy fats. They also contain micronutrients, things like iron, zinc, magnesium, copper, selenium, B vitamins, even calcium and vitamin E, which is an antioxidant. 
In turn, that means that nuts support our health in so many ways. Just like you mentioned, nuts support our heart health, our gut health, our brain health, our skin health, our immune system, and so much more. They're just a really nutrient-packed food to help our overall health. How do nuts help support energy levels throughout the day, and why is that important? Yes, I think we all know that having energy throughout the day is so important, and any food in general is going to help give you energy. Food is calories, which is what gives us energy, and nuts are a great way to get that energy. They contain protein and fiber, which is a really great way to get that lasting energy from food. This little package of nuts has six grams of fiber, which is a great amount of fiber, and seven grams of protein, which is as much as one egg. And that fiber is important because it helps maintain stable blood sugar levels, which in turn helps keep our energy levels stable. So overall, a really great way to keep our energy levels up throughout the day. And for those with nut allergies, are there any alternative snacks that, that have the same benefits? Yes, absolutely. For those with nut allergies, seeds are great. Things like chia seeds, pumpkin seeds, flax seeds, they offer a really similar nutrition profile to that of nuts. I really love Well Market has a tortilla chip, a multigrain tortilla chip with flax seeds and sunflower seeds. And it's a great way to get those nutrients in, pair it with something like a mashed avocado, and you've got a really nutrient-packed, delicious snack ready to go. And I'm curious, what's your favorite nut snack? It's so hard to choose. Oh my gosh, there is a salt and vinegar almond that is so delicious. The almonds are sprouted, which just helps make the nutrients in the almonds a little more easily absorbed by the body, a little more bioavailable. And then that salt and vinegar flavor is so delicious. I also love there's um, a chili crunch roasted cashew that's really, really good on like a sesame ginger style salad or really just paired with any savory meal to add that crunch, that flavor, and that little boost of nutrients. Where can our viewers go to learn more about the benefits of nuts? Yes, you can head to CVS.com or head to your local CVS pharmacy store to check out the entire Well Market nut line. What is CVS's new Well Market snack line and how can it support our wellness goals? CVS launched Well Market earlier this year and it basically incorporates all the products you know and love and then so many more. They have over 90 nut products, which is incredible. And what's really nice is that the snacks and the products are just easy, they're accessible. You know, we all know and love CVS, but the fact that you can go in, you can get a packaged snack that is easy to find, that's convenient, is nutrient packed, and most, important, most importantly, delicious. That's what I think is so cool. So Wall Market really incorporates all of that to offer so many nutrient packed, delicious options. Thanks for coming on our show, Sammy. Thank you for having me. We've all heard the term beauty sleep, but is it really a thing? Well, I, I wish it would work on me because uh, this face could, uh, it could use a lot of help. Well, it turns out there's actual science behind it. Your skin is more receptive at night, which helps repair damage and gives you that fresh glowing look in the morning. So let's be honest, getting a full night's sleep isn't always that easy. So today, we are joined by board-certified dermatologist, Dr. Alexis Stevens, who's here to break down the science of beauty sleep, share tips on maintaining healthy skin, and recommend what to do when you just can't get those extra hours of sleep. Welcome to the show, Dr. Stevens. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. All right, I got to get down to this. Is beauty sleep actually a thing? And... Uh, how does uh, getting good sleep really affect and help out our skin? So uh, such a good question. And yes, beauty sleep is undoubtedly a thing. So when we are sleeping, our skin is being at its most optimal to really help to repair and restore all of the damage that we occurred throughout the day. When you sleep, you're actually getting the most blood flow to your skin. So that means that the products and the skincare that you're putting on are being absorbed much better. They're much more receptive to actually having the skincare on because of that increase in blood flow. So yes, please do have a good nighttime routine. That way you can get the most bang for your buck because that's when your skin products work the best. So what ingredients should we be looking for in skincare products that help our skin uh, like naturally repair itself while we're trying to sleep? So some of the best ingredients for helping to repair are going to be AHAs and BHAs. So this is lactic acid and salicylic acid. These are really great for helping to exfoliate the skin. So basically increasing skin cell turnover 
Whenever you are increasing skin cell turnover, the skin looks more healthy, glowy, and radiant. So I love using those ingredients, pairing it with a really good moisturizer. So humectants like glycerin, that's another really good option. And the niacinamide is one of my favorite ingredients because it's a powerhouse. It does so many things. It helps with dark marks. It helps with anti-inflammatory. And it also helps with getting rid of any of those kind of stubborn little areas that maybe we overdid it with because it helps to restore your skin barrier. And peptides are really nice for making sure that we all age really well. All right, uh, since I got you here, uh, can we talk about these, these little, uh, little, little dark circles? Um, if we wake up with them, what's kind of the best way to like reduce them as quickly as possible, especially if you have a, a, a morning show you got to do really, really quick. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we all sometimes wake up with dark circles and there is a way to help to reduce them. So reach for a nice lightweight eye serum. I would reach for something that really has a lot of different ingredients that can help with different things. So caffeine can help with puffiness. Niacinamide can help with any dark circles. And you're also strengthening your skin barrier because your eye skin is really delicate. And vitamin C is a nice way to brighten up around the eyes. So the Olay Super Eyes Daily Eye Serum is such a good choice for this because it has all of those ingredients that we just talked about. All right, so what products do you recommend for those mornings when you're like, uh, didn't get enough sleep, might be hungover, uh, need some more uh, uh, ways to look refreshed? So the Olay Daily Eye Serum is amazing for the morning. You can also use it at night, but definitely pair it with the Olay Super Serum Night Repair. That way you're getting the most bang for your buck. You've taken care of your skin at night, and then you can use the eye serum during the day. You're laughing, but uh, I'm I need as much help as I can on this. On this. All right, where can we go for more information about any of this? Olay.com has more information, and your local retailers will have both products. Alexis Stevens, thanks for joining me this morning. Thanks for having me. Heart disease is the number one cause of death for women in the U.S., but a new study from the Women's Health Study is giving us more insight into how we can better predict and prevent it. The study found that a simple blood test can measure three components to predict cardiovascular risk over the next 30 years. Joining us to explain what this means is Dr. Pyle Coley, founder of and medical director of Cherry Creek Heart, associate professor at John Hopkins and Duke University. Welcome, Dr. Coley. Thank you so much for having me. Dr. Coley, can you tell us about the key findings from this women's health study? You know, it's really incredible because this type of a study empowers me as a female cardiologist to start to think about being smarter in terms of predicting risk in my women. So it took these three markers, as you mentioned. One was that usual cholesterol panel that we get every year. One is a test called CRP, which is a blood test, a marker of inflammation inside your blood vessels. And the third test is called lipoprotein A. Now, this is a genetic marker of risk, about 90% genetically determined, and 20% of us are walking around with elevated numbers of this marker, not realizing it. And yet every single one of us needs to have this marker checked. So if you had just one of these three markers elevated, you had risk, but the risk was additive. So if you had two elevated, it was even higher and all three elevated. Well, guess what? Now you're looking into the future 30 years later and seeing who's going to go on to have heart attacks and strokes. So for me, I'm going to start checking these markers in my patients. And if they're elevated, I'm going to treat those women more aggressively so that I can reduce their risk early before they have those cardiovascular events. What exactly is chronic inflammation and why is it dangerous for heart health? You know, inflammation is a tricky thing here because our body adapted inflammation to help us, right? That's why we evolved inflammation, because if you cut yourself, inflammation helps you heal. If you get a cold, inflammation helps you clear it. But prolonged inflammation or inflammation that gets turned on when it shouldn't can actually be maladaptive. It can be damaging to our body, and that's what chronic inflammation is. So we start to put down cholesterol in our arteries. That turns on that inflammation when it shouldn't, and then that inflammation stays on and goes on to cause problems because it causes that cholesterol plaque to get angry. It becomes you know, ooey and gooey, and it can pop pop open into the arteries, and that's how we get heart attacks and strokes. So chronic uncontrolled inflammation is really where the problem lies. And for many years as cardiologists, we've been focusing just on cholesterol, but now we've realized in addition to cholesterol, we need to start thinking about inflammation so that we can assess it and we can figure out whether or not we need to target it. What do these findings mean for the future of preventing heart disease in women? 
You know, two things here. I think first, we're going to get better about predicting heart disease. So, you know, we as women don't realize that we've got heart disease as a number one killer. Many of us don't know that. We think about heart disease as an old man's disease, but it's actually everybody's disease and statistically the most likely thing to happen to any of us. So predicting which of us are higher risk for heart disease using these types of blood tests is the first thing I think that this study has done in terms of impact. But more importantly, from my perspective, is modifying that risk. So, you know, know your numbers, know your risk. That's the first place. But then what do we do about it? And the idea here is to change our lifestyle, to reduce that inflammation, to lose weight, get more active, sleep more, be more social with each other, and all the other things, environmental pollution and such that can increase inflammation. But for some women, we may even need a medication. And the women that have had heart attacks and strokes before and have elevated markers of inflammation, that's somebody I might think about an anti-inflammatory medicine. And for the first time ever, we actually now have an inflammation medicine that's been used Used for you know conditions like gout that we can start in heart disease patients low dose colchicine so i'm really excited about the future because i think this type of research helps me to be smarter smarter than the disease i like to say helps me to figure out which of my patients have target signs on them and then helps me to figure out how to change that so that i can really outsmart the disease and and modify their risk in a way that many years later, they won't go on to have those heart attacks and strokes. Where can our viewers go to learn more about heart health and the study? So I would say two websites. The first is the American Heart Association's Life's Essential Eight. These are the eight things that every single one of us should be doing. And if you go in there and type in all your numbers, it actually spits out a score, tells you how well you're doing on those eight things that can reduce your risk of having a heart attack or stroke. Uh, the second is called uh, cbdinflammation.com. That's a website that tells you more about cardiovascular disease inflammation. And finally, I want you to write down these tests so that you can talk to your doctor about getting them. The CRP, the marker of inflammation, the lipid panel, your regular cholesterol panel, the lipoprotein A, which is that genetically determined fat marker, and then an X-ray of the heart called a calcium score if you're over the age of 40. These are the tests you ought to be checking so that we can better predict your risk and think about how to modify it. Thanks for joining us today, Dr. Coley. Thank you so much for having me. The holiday season can be a tough time for seniors who are dealing with loneliness and isolation. In fact, long-term loneliness can have serious health impacts. But senior living communities might be the solution to help your loved ones stay connected and engaged. Here to share some insights is Rick Wigington, Chief Sales Officer at Brookdale. Welcome, Rick. Abby, thanks for having me. Why is it so important to help seniors stay connected? You know, Abby, many older people don't realize how lonely and isolated they've become. Live, living in their house alone as they age, um, there's more and more research that, that recognizes that chronic loneliness over time can lead to premature death or also make other chronic illnesses more difficult to manage. And there's better ways to do this. And how do senior living communities help older adults make new friends and stay engaged? Well, it's easier because you live in a community, even though it's a private apartment, you've got neighbors who, who can become perhaps even good friends. And whether it's coming down to the restaurant or the dining area that's in the core of the community for breakfast or lunch or enjoying dinner together, hopping on the bus, going on outings or engaging in activities in big groups and small groups, it's just easier for people to find a sense of belonging in a community of friends when your neighbors are right there close by. What is the best way to talk to a senior who may be struggling with aging but doesn't want to leave their long-term home? Abby, too many older people think that their independence is defined by deed and ownership of their house and not realizing that the longer they stay in that house, the more dependent they may actually become on other people. So having the conversation soon, having it early, as soon as you recognize that, that things are progressively getting more difficult to manage, the longer they stay in that house can help you get in a better place faster. Should families start this conversation before the holidays or wait until afterwards? Abby, I encourage people to have the conversation as soon as you recognize that things are getting harder, which may be before the holidays get started, and, and also a recognition that this may be more than one conversation. But the objective is to help an older person live better 
And oftentimes moving to a different place can, can help achieve that. What should families do after they've had that initial talk? Well, the best thing to do is visit a community. We, we would encourage you to come visit us at Brookdale Senior Living because there, Abby, you can actually meet people. You can meet people who live there and talk with them about how they made the decision and how their life is better because they moved. And Abby, you can also talk with people who work there, people who've, who've made their whole vocation about helping older people and their kids find a, find a better path and a better way to live. And where can our viewers go to learn more? I'd love for them to come to brookdale.com. This website has a lot of useful information. And Abby, there's also a telephone number on the site where your viewers can call us and talk with a person live about what's going on in your life and see how we can help. I want to thank you, Rick, for joining us today. Abby, thanks for having me. As the cost of living keeps rising, a lot of folks, especially those on fixed incomes, are really kind of feeling that pinch. But did you know your health plan might actually help you save more on just medical costs? Well, today, I'm, do I'm joined by Dr. Alex Biu, Chief Medical Officer of Government Programs at United Healthcare. He's here to talk about the Dual Special Needs Plan, or DSNP, which could offer some extra support. Dr. Biu, thanks for being here, my friend. Thanks for having me. What exactly is a Dual Special Needs Plan, or a DSNP, and who really qualifies for it? So a dual special needs plan or DSNP is a plan for folks who have Medicare and Medicaid, and it provides extra assistance in managing across those two types of insurance uh, to make it uh, as easy as possible for you to stay healthy. These are really designed for people with uh, who qualify because of income, unique health needs, or age. And we build these to make it easier to stay on top of your health, such as many people in our United Healthcare uh, dual complete plan will qualify for $0 monthly premiums. What kind of everyday help can people get through a DSNP plan? Sure. Well, with the rising costs of living, uh, we know that people find it harder to uh, do the other things that uh, help your health beyond going to doctor's visits, and that's eating healthy and staying uh, in, in a healthy environment. So we've built that into our, uh, our plan with your United Healthcare U card. You have a monthly credit that can be applied towards healthy groceries, over-the-counter items like toothpaste, uh, as well as can be applied towards utility bill, uh, trying to keep you uh, in a comfortable environment and healthy. And preventive care is a big part of staying healthy as we age. How does a DSNP plan help support people's health as they're getting a little older? Absolutely, it's really important not to put off care and get those annual wellness visits in, especially now as we're entering uh, cold and flu season. Um, so in addition to having access to our uh, nationwide network of primary care and specialty providers, a dual complete plan will also help uh, reduce the cost barriers to engaging in, in primary care or in preventive care. Um, so we offer $0 copays on covered prescriptions, $0 copays on annual physicals, mammograms, colonoscopies, as well as annual uh, hearing and vision tests, uh, and, and uh, even mental health supports. All right, where can they go for more information about DNSP, DSNP plans and how they can sign up? Yeah, well, I really encourage people uh, who think they might apply or want to learn more uh, to go to getdual.com. That's G-E-T-D-U-A-L.com. You'll find more information about our dual complete plan there, as well as be able to apply. And it's important to do that now because the open enrollment period is open now through December 7th. Thank you, Dr. Biu. Thank you. Tyler Perry's latest drama, Beauty and Black, is already bringing some serious intrigue on Netflix. The show follows two women from very different walks of life as their worlds collide in unexpected ways. So today, I got Crystal Stewart, who plays Mallory, and Ta Taylor Polidor Williams, who stars as Kimmy, here to give us an inside look on the series. Welcome to the show, you two. Hello. Hey, hey Dan. Thanks for having us. <laughs> All right, uh, Beauty and Black brings together two very different characters on a, a collision course. Can you tell us about uh, y your characters and how their paths cross in the series? Ah, you can say one. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, like you said, Dan, I play Kimmy. And when we find Kimmy, she is just trying to survive. She is um, a product of an abusive household, was kicked out as a young person, and she's found herself in this whirlwind, crazy world, working in a strip club, being trafficked. It's literally the worst of the worst happening. And Mallory is a huge source of inspiration to her. 
And the way that the worlds collide is something that you have to watch because it's <laughs> literally, it is the entire story, <laughs> but it collides in the, the, the most <laughs> menacing way, the most crazy <laughs> way. Yeah. Yes, yes. And Mallory, I'm um, this businesswoman, owns this hair company, a super mogul millionaire, and my public persona is I like, carefully crafted. Like, so I'm philanthropic, I have a perfect family, everything is great, I'm very friendly, I love my fans, but the behind, behind closed doors, I'm like this vindictive bee. <laughs> I'm completely, like, um, just mean, <laughs> I guess you could say. To say the least. In, to say the least. <laughs> In Vindictive. So she's inspiring to be like me, but she doesn't know how I am behind closed doors. And Tyler Perry is um, transcendent in, in, in film and culture. Uh, I consider him one of the best filmmakers of all time who kind of changed filmmaking. How, how, is, how was it working with him? That's, uh, and how did it help kind of shape your performances and how did he support or cater to your needs to build the characters that you needed to put on screen? I'm glad he trusted me with this role, to yeah. be honest. This is something very different for me. Um, when I worked with him, I had a com it was a comedy show called For Better or Worse, and it was all laughter and fun and giggles, but this one is just drama, drama, and poor drama. And he really believed in me and felt that I could do this role. But my personality is completely different from Mallory, so I really had to you know, just show my acting chops. And he believed in me, he pulled it out. He's like, you know, you can pull it from somewhere. You've had things that happened in your life pull it from there and give me Mallory to its fullest. So I hope I made him proud. Yeah, echoing that, um, very honored. I worked with Tyler for the first time uh, this summer with uh, Divorce in the Black, which came out on Amazon Prime. And that experience was so quick because it was a movie. <laughs> um, his but movie. With, yeah, his <laughs> movie, which is a complete different thing. <laughs> so um, when Beauty and Black came about with Kimmy, I was like, this is heavy. It's very heavy very different than anything I've ever played before. And his confidence in me gave me the confidence to do what I needed to do. And filming was an absolute joy. Like I had already worked with him before. And like Crystal said, he can just pull things out of you. Things that I might be like, was that okay? And he's like, I got it. Yeah. And he does. Yeah. And he does. Like, you just, okay, that was it good. is complete trust. And mm -hmm. he, he, he's spot on. Yeah. And now that the show is out, what do you think viewers can expect from part one of Beauty and Black? And what are you guys most excited for audiences to see? I am so excited for people. They are going to be like, this is so insane. Next episode. <laughs> Next episode. Binge, it's one binge, of those binge. things. Yep. Yeah. It's definitely binge work. It's sexy. It's edgy. It's dramatic. And it's so many characters. I feel the audience will find someone that they can resonate with yeah. or just fall in love with. It's gritty. Mm-hmm. All right, don't miss Beauty and Black. It's now streaming on Netflix. Catch the drama and make sure you follow along as the story unfolds. You can find part one of the 16-episode series right now, so head over to Netflix and start watching. Crystal Stewart, Taylor Palador williams thank you two for joining me this morning. Thanks, thank Dan. You. you have a good one. <laughs> And that is it for New Mexico Rising. I want to thank you for tuning in and checking out the show. If you want to get some tickets to Red One, all you got to do is go to our website, NewMexicoRising.com, and fill out the form because we're giving out a family four-pack of passes to the advanced screening of Red One right here in Albuquerque. Follow our YouTube channel. Make sure you like and subscribe so that you don't miss an episode. That is at NM Rising. And until next week, that was New Mexico Rising.